Hey everyone, it's Raiden, back with another video. Uh, first time in, oh, uh, a decade and a half or so. Or nine months, take your pick. And, uh, I don't know when I'll be continuing the wedlock. Uh, it just became something that I was less and less interested in reviving as the months went on, and, uh, Especially as I started trying to write out other projects, uh, which some of which I have in the works right now. But in the meantime, I have joined an online draft league. So for those who don't know, a draft league is a format where you pick 11, in my case, 11 Pokemon, and you play against other players, and you build teams out of only those 11 Pokemon. They're completely unique to you, nobody else can use them. By the same token, you can only use those teams from those 11 Pokémon. So, I'm going to be doing videos on my journey through this Draft League. It's my first Draft League in four or five years, so I'm really excited to be hopping back into it. Uh, as you can see, my team is the Boston Nihiligos, and um, it is definitely not derivative of a certain classic rock band. Uh, certainly not at all. So, I want to walk you through today uh, kind of how I went about going through the draft and show you guys the team that I assembled. So, in the Draft League, our format is VGC Series 9, so that means it's going to be played with double battles. It means that I don't get to use the cover legendary restricted Pokémon, so nothing like Kyogre or Zacian or Zekrom. Uh, it does mean I have to play with Dynamax, and it means that I get... Uh, I get to use anything from the Sword and Shield base game, the Isle of Armor, and the Crown Tundra, uh, as well as the various legendaries that can be found in the Crown Tundra. Uh, all matches are going to be played in best of three, which kind of eliminates a few gimmicky strategies I'll talk more about later. And as I mentioned before, I draft 11 Pokémon. so. The way it works is all the Pokémon were sorted into tiers. I'm going to put a link to to the uh, tiers down in the description, just so that way you guys know kind of what I was working with a bit more. In short, I had one Gigantamax Pokémon that I had to draft, and then I had to draft at least one from every single tier. Tier 3, I was... I needed to draft two Pokémon. And then I had four free picks. And the way that free picks work, you're given a certain number of points. And within those points, you can choose how you want to spend them most efficiently. The way I chose to do it, I chose to get one Pokemon from Tier 1, one Pokemon from Tier 2, one from Tier 4, and one from Tier 5. I felt like those gave me the most options for how to best play my team, as you'll see in a bit. So, I had about a week from the time I joined the draft to when the draft actually started to fully brainstorm what I wanted to do. Uh, I had a few uh, main things that I wanted in, in my team. The first thing I wanted was comfort. I think Draft League is is a format where you play against a lot of unexpected strategies. It very much favors kind of wacky strategies that only would really work in a hyper-specific matchup. So having Pokemon that I am comfortable using is very important to me, so that way I know what I want to do and I don't get thrown off as easily. At the same time, I also want versatility in what I can use. I don't want to have to run the same set every single week. It's one of the things that I would not like about using something like, say, Regieleki, which has 
three sets that I can really work with, and that's kind of it. And there's little wiggle room for what it's going to do in each of those. A good mix of offense and defense. Uh, VGC right now, it tends to skew very offense-oriented. Uh, but I personally like having a good balance of being able to switch in and take attacks, as well as just going all out on the offensive. I did also try to make my team skew a bit more offense-oriented, since, again, right now, with Dynamax, uh, it favors those offense-oriented strategies. I wanted to avoid gimmicks. Uh, this is stuff that I would consider, like, uh, Beat Up plus Justified. Uh, so something like Terracot. Uh, Drakian Whimsicott, that is. I wanted to avoid something like... Uh, Colossal strategies, or, um, uh, like, uh, Tauros Frostlass strategies, uh, with Anchor Point, or, uh, or, for that matter, Crooked Isle Frostlass strategies. Uh, I didn't, I didn't really want to, to rely on something that works only in a best of one, or works best in a best of one scenario, for my money. Uh, there are players who can definitely make those work. I'm just not really one of those. It's not really how I like playing the game either, so I chose to try and leave those behind. Weather and terrain control. So where every person where every player only has access to one of each Pokemon, that means that not every terrain is going to be drafted. Or is I will not have to play every terrain each week, and I will not have to play every weather each week. So if I can get the terrain and weather, and or weather that I want, then I can guarantee that I have a slightly favorable matchup against whoever has those, and it means that they're having to play under my rules for that. And it means that on weeks where I don't have to face that, I kind of get free reign, and it's up to my opponent to find an answer to that. And finally, Pokemon that I haven't used in a while. Uh, as of right now, I'm doing a little bit of Series uh, 12, or BGC 2022, as it's technically called, uh, with two restricted Pokemon. And it's left me with a lot of Pokemon that I just frankly haven't used in a while and would love to use, but just haven't really gotten much of a chance to. So I wanted to use this as an opportunity to make use of some Pokemon that I haven't used in a while, or in some cases have never actually used before. So I had a lot of ideas for Pokemon that I wanted to draft or build around, uh, mostly in the top three tiers. Uh, and you can see a huge list of them there. Uh, some of the highlights, uh, Politoed Kingdra Ludicolo as a rain core, uh, Lapras G-Max as, uh, I think, I think probably the best Gigantamax move in the game, uh, give or take the damage, the, uh, passive damage ones. Uh, setting up Aurora Veil, is so, so powerful, and it forces my opponents to bring some sort of answer to it, like Haze, Infiltrator, or, or Brick Break. Magnezone is a solid Pokemon for trying to trap Steel types. Heavy Trick Room is something that I used a lot in 2017, uh, especially after Gavin Michaels won his second regional with it. It's a team core that I'm very familiar with, but I also really like using it with Hariyama, who is not in Sword and Shield, so I kind of decided against it for that reason, basically. Gothitelle is nice for trapping. Tapu Koko, Driftblim, uh, you could have put any of the terrain setters there. I thought Tapu Koko would probably be the easiest one for me to get, though something like Rillaboom or Tapu Fini or Tapu Lele uh, would also have worked with Driftblim. Celesteela, I think, is one of the most versatile Pokemon out there. It's not really a master of any one thing, but it is a 
Pokemon that does so many different things very well. I ended up looking at Sand Teams. Sand kind of is my is my default strategy. It's something that I also used a decent amount of in 2017 with Galith. I used a lot of Sand when I was playing in the early stages of 2018 and 2020. I even tried making Sand work in in one of the restricted format, or actually in multiple restricted formats, uh, both in series 10 and uh, series 8. So I felt like sand would be a good place for me to look at. Uh, and a good, it would be a good comfort pick, and it also accomplishes a lot of my core ideas. So there were 11 rounds of the draft, and I kind of broke up that into multiple parts so I could talk about various various aspects of what I was thinking in each of them. So in the first four rounds, the number one goal was pick four very versatile Pokemon that I can build a team around so that way I have a lot of flexibility with my picks and I'm not required to say, oh, I really need to get this one specific Pokemon in round number such and such in order to make my draft work, because uh, that's very susceptible to getting sniped. I was the 8th pick out of 12, uh, so a lot of my picks could very easily have gotten sniped. I was fortunate in that I had a lot of draft plans and was pretty adaptable to how I wanted them to work, and I had a lot of different fallbacks, so I never felt like... Well, uh, that's a lie. I had uh, one round where I really felt like I got sniped, and even then it's kind of my fault that I did. So that was goal number one. Uh, goal number two was to start on some of the following type cores. Fire, Water, Grass is perhaps the most famous type triangle. Uh, they are three types that just have an insane amount of coverage and uh, really do cover each other's weaknesses very well. Uh, water types tend to be very good when they're played bulky. Grass types have a lot of interesting, interesting support moves. Fire is a great offensive and defensive type. Uh, the Fairy Dragon Steel or Fantasy Core, a, one of the single best type triangles out there. Uh, they all just cover each other extraordinarily well and uh, all play very strong. The Psychic Dark Fighting or PDF core is not as good as the other two defensively but really shines in the offensive department. And then the Electric Ground core, I like having uh, both of those just because Disc or uh, Discharge and Earthquake Combos are very strong in VGC. Uh, even just having an electric type and a ground type on a team is very, very useful to have. So I wanted to make sure that I had that. I wanted some sort of speed control, so something like Thunder Wave, Max Airstream, Tailwind, Trick Room. Any of those were something that I was okay having. I didn't necessarily need a dedicated speed control Pokemon, but just a way to get some speed control. I wanted to get a weather and or a terrain uh, since pre pretty much all of the potential setters were in tiers one and two and I felt like they would go pretty quick, uh, especially once the first one goes, uh, the, of those goes, the next ones tend to go pretty quick. Finally, I wanted to make sure that I draft a high-tier electric type and or a high-tier fairy type. Uh, the reason is, there's a lot of Pokemon that can make those types work in lower tiers, but the difference in power between something like, say, Manectric and something like uh, Tapu Koko is a pretty enormous level of power difference, and I felt like having strong Pokemon from these two types would be incredibly beneficial to me. So round number one, I had intended to get Tyranitar, and I actually did get Tyranitar as my first pick. 
It is my competitive Pokemon comfort pick. It's what I fall back to in multiple different formats. Sandstream is a phenomenal ability. Setting up sand for five turns is pretty nice in VGC, and in some games it can last the entire battle and not and the weather won't change, or you only get like two or three turns outside of sand. So it's really good for dealing with passive damage. Tyranitar has a speed that can work as either a Tailwind or Trick Room, Sweeper or Counter. It's got some good bulk, it's got a lot of variability in moves where it can be run as a physical, special, or mixed attacker. It's got a lot of different options. It's a dark type, which helps counter a lot of the most common Trick Room answers, and I just really like Tyranitar and wanted to make sure that I had it. So, round two, I had intended to get G-Max Venusaur, but it got sniped very early on in round one, which I figured it would. So I just defaulted to my next pick on the list, which was Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele is arguably the strongest fairy, the strongest fairy type in draft format. Uh, Psychic Terrain is so nice to have. It is my personal favorite of the terrains. It's really good offensively and defensively. Uh, and I feel like Tapu Lele is a Pokemon that works pretty well with or without its terrain up, which is nice. It's a Psychic type as well, which helps on that Psychic Dark fighting core, uh, and gives a lot of offensive pressure, especially on the uh, special side. It pairs really well with Tyranitar. I used both Tapu Lele and Tyranitar on a, a team back in 2018. And they cover each other's weaknesses pretty well. They both kind of struggle to deal with steel types, but I had nine other picks at this point to solve that issue. Lele has a variety of moves and items. Uh, Dazzling Gleam, Moon Blast, uh, Psy Shock, and several others. Uh, and has a lot of items that it can make use of. All, of. all of those items have been items I've used on Lele at one point or another. It can also run something like a Resist Berry or a Focus Sash if I need it to. And it even has several support options like Ally Switch, Taunt, Screens, and some others that I'm trying to keep a little bit secret in case my competitors see this video. So I was really happy to get Tapu Lele for this. The next one I got was Zapdos. Uh, I had intended to take Lele on this round, but Again, I just moved up my draft plan quite a bit. So, uh, I got Zapdos, which was my ideal electric type. Uh, it was also... So, Tapu Lele, I forgot to mention, was my tier 1 free pick. Uh, Zapdos was my pick for tier 2. Uh, with Max Airstream and Thunder Wave, it's got really good speed control options. Uh, 2018, it was very famous for the Psychic Seed combination with Tapu Lele to help, to help give it some bulk. It covers Steel and Fighting types pretty well. Uh, Static is nice for dealing with something like Urshifu Pesk form. I mean, um, both forms of Urshifu, but in particular, uh, Rapid Strike style. I forgot which one it was. Volt Switch is really nice for being able to get a hit in and get out of there as quickly as I can. It has a lot of flexibility in items and moves, meaning I can kind of customize it to whatever I need it to be on on any particular round. Uh, Eerie Impulse is also a really nice support option to have for dealing with opponent's special attack stats. So for round four, I, I didn't really know what I was going for that round, but uh, when I got there, I saw a Pokemon that I had not expected to see at that point. Usually I find this Pokemon goes pretty quickly after someone takes Tyranitar. Uh, but this draft was weird in a number of ways. And, uh, and so I made a few changes in my draft plan and made room so that way I could get Excadrill. 
Uh, this round I had intended to take Zapdos. Uh, fallback would have probably been Drifblim, so I could do Psychic Sheet, Psychic Seed shenanigans with Tapu Lele. But uh, getting Excadrill was even better than my wildest dreams. I genuinely did not expect to get this Pokemon. And why the other 11 players let me get this thing is beyond me. Under Sand, it is an offensive monster. With Sandrush, it is one of the fastest Pokemon in the game, even when running Adamant and a decent amount of bulk. It still outspeeds a large majority of the game. And the fact that it hits as hard as it does is kind of ridiculous. It doesn't have it doesn't have a lot of variability in moves, but what moves it does have all hit like a truck. Uh, and even without sand, I can run Mold Breaker, which allows me to hit levitating Pokemon like Bronzong and Rotom for super effective damage. Max Quake and Max Steel Spike are two of the best max moves out there for my money, uh, and help increase the survivability of a team. And uh, why did they let me pick this thing again? Um, I, I don't know. So those were the first four rounds, and they went, for my for what I think, better than I could have possibly imagined. So in rounds 5, 2 through 8, I wanted to start on my Fire, Water, Grass core. I wanted more speed control and preferably a Tailwind user where my team was shaping up to be a very fast team. Uh, since it was all so fast, I needed some general bulk and survivability on the team. Uh, so not necessarily focused on trying to get as offense-oriented Pokemon, but trying to make sure that I could actually switch in, take an attack as needed. I also needed some answers to Trick Room, because, uh, well, as of right now, if Trick Room goes up, that's kind of bad for my team. Uh, I needed to edit my draft plan quite a bit to fit Excadrill. So I just grabbed the most necessary Pokemon, um, so that way it worked. I also wanted to get another Flying type, but it wasn't completely necessary. This way I can run Earthquake, Mold Breaker strats with Excadrill, and pretty comfortably do a bunch of side Earthquakes. So round 5, I had intended to get either Entei or Blaziken. I I went into the draft thinking I was going to get Blaziken, and then I decided against Blaziken after we had gotten into the draft, and after I was... I had gotten Excadrill, and I was editing my draft plan again. And so then I had wanted Entei. Uh, more on them in a bit. Uh, but when it came for my pick, I decided to get Suicune, who was on my radar and would have been my next round pick, but... Uh, I felt like I needed to guarantee some bulk and a good water type on my team at this point, so I went with Suicune, and that ended up being a bit of a mistake for me. Uh, Suicune is kind of the quintessential bulky water type. It's got terrific defenses and HP. Uh, it also has access to Tailwind and many other supporting options like Snarl, Icy Wind, Roar, Helping Hand, and Skull. Uh, it has very little variability in what it does, but it does it all very well. It's a Pokemon that I that I used a little bit in 2015, and I'm happy to try it again in, in this format. Uh, it can't be flinched, thanks to Inner Focus, and most importantly, it's a dog. Uh, and I have a dog, so I at least got the dog covered. So round six, I had intended to take Suicune this round, and at this point, I I had gotten uh, a couple of my picks, or I had gotten one of my fire type picks, Snipe, and so I was kind of worried that a bunch of other people were trying to get their their lower tier picks at the same time I was. So I wanted to make sure that I could get into some of those lower tier picks and make sure that I can guarantee them. 
Uh, and the first one that I really wanted to get was Kangaskhan. Uh, sadly, not Mega Kangaskhan. Uh, the regular Kangaskhan has a couple of neat tricks. It's got Scrappy... It's got Fake Out, which is uh, buffed by Scrappy to hit Ghost types. So the only Pokemon that actually have to... Or that can actually lead into a Kangaskhan Fake Out and be okay are ones with Quick Guard and ones with Inner Focus, which is a very small percentage of the draft. So I kind of have free reign on Fake Out with Kangaskhan. It's got well-rounded bulk and offense, meaning I can switch it in and out and have several fake outs throughout the game. It's got lots of use usable offense and support moves like Helping Hand and Ice Punch. With a normal type, it helps switch into ghost type moves, which is important where someone had drafted Dragapult, another person has drafted Drifblim by this point. Uh, and with Scrappy, it is also immune to Intimidate, which is an effect that I always forget about. Uh, so round 7 is where things got kind of weird. I had intended to take Kangaskhan this round, but I went with it on round 6. I had intended to pick Entei as my fire type, but that got sniped immediately after I picked Suicune. And then, not long after I had picked Kangaskhan, my next choice fire type, uh, Blaziken, got sniped. So I was talking with a friend about what fire type to pick, and I had been leaning towards Rotom Heat as a potential fire type, which I wasn't as big a fan of, and then I saw that Talonflame was available, and was in the same tier, so it was a fire type of roughly equal value, and I'm, I thought, why don't I just get Talonflame? Uh, it is one of the fastest fire types in the game. Uh, even without Gale Wings to boost its flying type moves, it's still ridiculously fast. It's got priority Tailwind and Max Airstream for, for insane speed control, uh, especially if I am gutsy and Dynamax it on turn one. I do kind of have to watch out for my own psychic terrain with this. It has a lot of support options like Quick Guard, Taunt, and Willemus. Uh, okay, that's about it. And it's got potential for mixed offense. It gets both Hurricane and Overheat, so I could potentially run it as a special attacker. Uh, and another thing that I kind of like about Talonflame compared to Blaziken in particular is item variability. Talonflame is a lot more okay with slapping a choice band, or safety goggles, or even something stupid like Rocky Helmet on it. Uh, it can make those items work, so I've surprisingly never used Talonflame, or I might have used it a little bit in 2016, but uh, I'm really excited to be trying to use Talonflame here. Uh, round 8... I had intended to get Scizor. Uh, originally, I had planned to do a Tier 1, Tier 3, Tier 4, Tier 5 pick. Uh, but when I decided to pick up Excadrill, I dropped Scizor from the roster. So I got Gorgeist instead. Gorgeist, ha as a grass type, beats water and ground types that give my team a bit of trouble right now, especially the Tyranitar Excadrill core. As a ghost type, it helps manage my fighting type weakness. It's got a plethora of support options, Willow Mist, Trick or Treat, Trick Room, Trick, uh, Pain Split, Ally Switch, Destiny Bond. The multiple forms, uh, so Gorgai's main gimmick is that it can be any of four forms, and they all have different stats uh, that change basically the speed or HP of Gorgas. And each of those form, and if I can EV it right, I can make Gorgas work under Tailwind, or it can be a Trick Room user. It also synergizes phenomenally well with Kangaskhan, 
especially if I want to do some real trick-or-treat shenanigans to give Kangaskhan an extra stab type, make it immune to fighting type moves, uh, which is kind of hilarious to me, but uh, who knows if I'll actually be able to pull that off. So we're in the late stages of the draft, and really it's kind of just about completing completing a lot of what I have. Uh, I want to complete my fantasy core, so that means getting a dragon type. I want to complete my PDF core, so that means getting a fighting type. I want another Pokemon that can fight under Trick Room, so basically anything under base 85 speed with semi-reasonable bulk. And, oh, I, I also need to get a Gigantamax Pokemon. A lot of the Gigantamaxes went round one and two. Uh, and I was the only person left in the, in the last two rounds who had not drafted a Gigantamax. And the reason for that is I had a lot of Pokemon that I wanted to guarantee I'd get from pretty much every tier. And by not drafting a Gigantamax Pokemon, it meant that I could guarantee to get some of the strongest Pokemon from each tier. Uh, at the cost of having a slightly weaker Gigantamax Pokemon, but the one I got I'm pretty happy with. So round 9 I had intended to get Dracloak, but I didn't think it was in as high of demand when I was looking at a lot of the teams. So I moved it to a bit later in the draft lineup, and what I actually got was Heracross. With Guts, it can one-hit KO many popular Trick Room users. Even Porygon 2 with maximum HP and defense has a 30% chance to get KO'd by Guts-boosted Heracross close combat, which is kind of nuts, and also a bit of a waste on bulk for Porygon 2. It has incredibly strong offensive pressure, it's got a good speed stat, and a decent amount of flexibility and coverage moves. It's not used that much in VGC just because Power Creep has been so ridiculous and unkind to it and Max Airstream is everywhere, but in the right context I think Heracross can work here. Uh, it also happens to be one of my favorite Pokemon ever, so I'm really excited about Heracross here. Round 10, I had intended to get Swampert as kind of a late sweeper sleeper pick from tier 4, uh, but when I got Excadrill, I dropped Swampert from the lineup because I didn't really need another ground type, and I had intended to get Suicune, so I didn't really need a second bulky or I didn't need a second bulky water type. And this is where I decided to get Dracloak, uh, who is my other tier 5 pick. It's got fast support options such as Willow Mist, Breaking Swipe, Disable, Ally Switch, Helping Hand, Thunder Wave. It's got the Dragon type to help with the Fantasy Core, which was kind of why I started looking at it originally. It's got the Ghost type for helping to switch in. Uh, but really, the fact that it's as fast as it is with the potential for U turn, uh, it outspeeds. Or it speed ties with Garchomp, which nobody drafted, so there's a lot of Pokemon that I can just use Dracloak against and cripple them before they get a chance to move. Uh, it has a little flexibility with items. It can certainly run Eviolite, which is nice because nothing else on my team is going to be competing for it. It could run Choice Scarf because I'm not really going to be trying to Dynamax this thing. Uh, it, it's certainly a very interesting Pokemon, and one that I'm very, very curious to see how it performs. So finally, my Gigantamax Pokemon. This round, I had intended to get Meowstic F, uh, because I wanted, a, I wanted a Pokemon with Intimidate Deterrent, but I never seriously wanted Meowstic F. It just seemed like the best of what was left in tier 5, but once I had decided to get Heracross, then I basically just dropped Meowstic from the lineup, and I needed to get a Gigantamax Pokemon this round. Uh, and the ones I had considered were Alchemy, uh, somewhat Inteleon, a little bit of Appleton, and Duraludon. 
or Duraladon. And as you can see here, I went with Duraladon, uh, in part for the Steel type redundancy. Uh, having a having stab max Steel Spike is ridiculous and should not go unstated just how good it is. Uh, and the fact that I have an offensive dragon type as a instead of just a supporting dragon type like Draclog is also really nice to have. The main thing that drew me to Duraludon was Stalwart, which means that I can ignore redirection or abilities that redirect like Lightning Rod. Uh, just notice the big old typo at the bottom there with Dragon Pulse and for Dark Pulse and Body Press, oh well. Uh, it has a pretty wide move pool, those are some of the moves listed that Duraludon can run. And the G-Max move isn't great, but it still hits for the same power as Max Wormwind, even though it doesn't lower attack, it lowers power points, uh, which has its uses against Pokemon that tend to run Choice Scarf like Urshifu, or uh, even something like Landorus, Landorus, or if I hadn't drafted it, Tapu Lele. Uh, if I... If I had gone with Inteleon, I'd probably be a little bit better shape offensively, but uh, I really like Duraludon here. So with the team at a glance, uh, this is my entire draft lineup here. As you can see, it is very offense-oriented, which I think helps in a, in a Dynamax-oriented format. Uh, Dynamax favors teams that move first and hit hard. I got a really strong sand core. Uh, Tyranitar, Tapu Lele, Zapdos, and Excadrill were a part of a team that I used back in 2018 that did pretty well on ladder. And um, I are four Pokemon that I would have, you know, actually put on a team together, which is kind of ridiculous. And if Kangaskhan had been a Mega, I probably would have included it as well. The team has a lot of potential for mixed speed control, though, though it certainly has a preference for Tailwind. Uh, the team is a little fighting type weak. I have a four times weakness to fighting, I've, and I have three Pokemon that have a double weakness to fighting. Uh, though I do have several Pokemon that are immune to fighting or resistant to fighting. Uh, the only Pokemon that that takes neutral from fighting on my team is actually Suicune. Uh, though the re though where so many of my most offense-oriented options are fighting type weak, it it does kind of have me worried for when I'm playing against the two Ursh for the weeks where I'm playing against the Urshifus. In conclusion, I'm really happy with the team. Uh, I still can't believe I got a legitimate sand team. Um, and the team feels like a throwback to some of my favorite years of VEC, 2015, 2018, 2017. It's a lot of Pokemon I am comfortable with and several that I've never used in VGC, like Talonflame and Heracross and Draclope. And I think this team has a real good shot for playoffs and potential for making playoffs and potentially the finals. So with that, uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. I will be doing uh, draft team building videos each week, uh, and team, and then of course the match videos each week. Uh, they'll all be played on Showdown, so not quite as good quality as the actual game, but it'll still look, it'll still be presentable enough, and I'll still be there to. Uh, to walk with you guys through this, so I hope you're as excited for this as I am, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take care of yourselves.